I have many theories. One of them is the Albert Einstein, Snoop Dogg, Drake, and Lionel Richie foundation of knowledge adding value and bring your A-game theory. Let me start off by saying, fortunately, that I won't be rapping for you today. But if you enter the one or two of the names I just mentioned in Leasing Reality search function, you might have a newfound disrespect or respect for me after hearing my faux rapping skills. Anyway, as part of my daily leasing gymnastics workout, I try and heed the 21st century version of Albert Einstein's advice, namely to try not to be a man or woman of success, but rather be a man or woman of value. Getting a bit deeper on you, I am a believer in legendary rapper Snoop Dogg's line, even if it's flipping hamburgers at McDonald's, be the best hamburger flipper in the world there is. Whatever it is you do, master your craft. When it comes, courtesy of Lionel Richie and the Commodores, to building a brick house of knowledge so that I can master my LOI and lease negotiations, I consciously or subconsciously channel a multitude of hip-hop heartthrob Drake song titles, including that of Started From The Bottom, because among other things, if I don't continue to build a fundamental foundation of skills, my iPhone will no longer light up with calls from my clients, which will consequently result in my no longer having access to my hotline bling or dreams that money can buy. Getting back to planet reality, though, my first job after graduating law school was as an accountant at One New York Plaza. It's where I started to, as Michael Jordan once said, to master the fundamentals. Accounting was never my game nor my passion, but the skills gained while being an auditor and then a tax guy were critical bricks in the foundation of knowledge that I was building. Back in the early 90s, when the Resolution Trust Corporation was quite the rage, a few of my childhood pals and I, in various professional roles, worked together as employees at a mid-sized developer. A major part of our day was spent representing a number of institutional purchases of loan portfolios, such as Lehman Brothers, Lenar Partners, and the Archon Group where the mortgage paper was going south and the properties secured by those mortgages by way of receivership were to be taken away from their soon-to-be former owners. Over a nine to 36 month period, we nurtured these properties as if we had given birth to them from receivership through disposition and soon our niche evolved. We were now real estate turnaround specialists, performing real estate triage on the properties as one of my old partners used to say. Some of the properties were in the formerly distressed and soon to be emerging areas of Lower Manhattan where we ended up buying 60 Broad Street with a lot of help from friends and family. Soho, namely 270 Lafayette, where I'm standing right now, which was my baby. Also in Chelsea, Trebekah, and yes, even the rough and tumble neighborhoods of Westport and Greenwich, Connecticut. With the aforementioned experience gained in the trenches in 1996, along with a few newfound friends and virtually no money of our own, we found a way to create a fully integrated real estate company. At our company, in a relatively short period of time, we gained an even greater appreciation and understanding of what it took to be successful in the development, the management, and repositioning of commercial and residential properties. And in business, once again, by focusing on the fundamentals. Eventually, by the time 1997 and 1998 rolled around, Newark and Harlem became our new playgrounds. I have many lines, and some who live and work with me refer to them as Larryisms. There are those who think they are in the thousands. One of them, though, that's in my top three, and it's as simple as simple can be, is simply be nice and work hard. Arguably, the only two things in life that we can control. I've been preaching that line to my three older boys since they were three or four years old, and thankfully, it has become part of their inner fabric. If you do those two things, be nice and work hard, life will be nothing short of okay, but at the same time, by following this be nice, work hard mantra, you can and will create opportunities for yourself to, to, to basically make life pretty damn good and then some. 
I, for example, when Bill Clinton literally dropped into our lap up on 125th Street, when he made like LeBron James did years later, but instead Bill took his talents to Harlem, after he was getting a significant amount of bad press, he basically dropped in our, in our lap. He was going to take his office, his post-presidency office, near 57th Street. The rent was too high. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was pure kismet, along with a healthy serving of good karma for my then partners and I. All were nice. Yeah, a few nicer than others, but all were nice. But all were well-intentioned, hard workers, and talented as well. And hard work, along with a bit of charm, warmth, sincerity, and skill led to opportunity and consequently good luck and some fortune. Regrettably, most of it was lost in Newark, New Jersey, but that's another story left for another day and an extremely tall drink nearly the size of the Empire State Building. I will leave you though for the moment with one related thought. If it wasn't for Newark, New Jersey and the pain that we went through there, there would be no such thing as leasing reality. Reminiscent of the first time the Beatles came to New York City on a Friday in 1964, landing at JFK Airport where both joy and mayhem ruled the day. It was quite similar to the day when former President Bill Clinton held a press conference right in front of 55 West 125th Street with yours truly standing bewildered, awestruck, and exhilarated by the fact that he was dropped on our doorstep less than two weeks after he left the White House after his two-term presidency. As I stood over his shoulder that day at the press conference and afterward with both my partners and a few uh, Harlem dignitaries over lunch, you know, what was um, amazing that day is that he ironically foreshadowed what leasing reality attempts and does achieve when he said at the press conference that, and I quote, I hope we can work the lease out and all of the details. I feel confident that we can. I'm looking forward to it. Little did I know of the myriad of twists and turns in the road that life, business, 9-11, and the Great Recession would play after that day, leaving many, and initially myself at times, stuck on the metaphorical corner of Kvetch Avenue and Wine Street, dwelling on what no longer was and what no longer would be again. But his words must have stuck in the seemingly outer reaches of my mind as lease and reality is and can be many things to many people. One of those being the ability to give to its users the confidence to conquer both their leasing fears as well as the brick and mortar.